<laughs> so how does the kite guitar accomplish all this? 41 Edo. 41 e is the first Edo that improves all intervals over 12 Edo. Now, you could try the full 41 frets per octave. That's a lot of frets. Instead, the kite guitar omits half of them. Each string has half the notes. But the next string has the other half. The full 41 notes are just spread out over two strings. This works because the interval between open strings is tuned to an odd number of Edo steps, in this case, 13. Yeah, so here's two Edo steps, meaning one a step of 41 Edo, two steps here. And that's about 60 cents. But the notes that are nearest in pitch from the 41 are actually physically far away on this guitar. So it's over here. And these Edo steps are only 29 cents each. <laughs> Such a bargain. <laughs> uh, here, here's the fifth. And so uh, that's pretty close. And here's an up fifth. Ooh, that last one sounds really off. We call that an off-perfect interval. It's one Edo step away from perfect. Off-perfect intervals are historically called wolf intervals for their howling dissonance. Yeah, it's pretty shaky. So octaves could be off too, off-perfect, like this. There's an up octave or a down octave. If I'm looking for the octave here, it's not actually on that string at all. It's over here. And it's kind of nice because it's really easy to reach and the other one's hard. So basically, yeah. if we had all 41 frets, these off perfect intervals would be right next to the perfect ones where they'd be easy to play by mistake. Instead, they're moved safely out of the way. Miraculously, all the building blocks for the chords are easy to reach. And so all the intervals from the first 10 harmonics are right under my fingers. And this trick doesn't work for most Edos. It really only works with 41, by this, and which by incredible coincidence just happens to be one of the best tuned Edos. Ups and downs. So what notes does 41 Edo have? Well, let's start with 12 Edo for comparison. This chart shows the sense, the interval names, the note names. So now let's look at 41 Edo. But read down the first column and then read up the second column, you get some sense of uh, the magnitude of notes in 41. It's like a painter with a huge palette of colors. And with so many notes, we need to expand the usual note names and interval names. So we use ups and downs, which take you up or down one Edo step. So we have C sharp, and above C sharp, there's up C sharp, and below it, there's down C sharp. And notice that C sharp and D flat are two different pitches in the system. Okay, so plain means no ups or downs. So plain notes are the closest to 12 Edo. Plain intervals add up as usual, so from G to A is a major second. Now, for 41 Edo, we simply include ups and downs. And ups and downs add up and cancel out logically. So everything works out. Frequency ratios and the four harmonic thirds. So musical intervals can be described as frequency ratios. If two notes are an octave apart, the upper note is twice the frequency of the lower note. That's a two over one ratio. Or also written as a one to two ratio. From harmonic one to harmonic two is that same two over one interval. And indeed, it is an octave. The interval from harmonic two to harmonic three is three over two, which is a fifth. From harmonics three to four is a four over three, a perfect fourth. 
So harmonics four through nine actually contain four different kinds of thirds, meaning thirds from ABC. We're saying the thirds in letters. And so the kite guitar can play all of those. And from harmonic four to five is a down major third. Harmonics five to six make an up minor third. So far, these sound pretty traditional. The next two are novel harmonies that use the seventh harmonic. Harmonics six and seven make a down minor third. So now the harmonic series goes from thirds to seconds. Harmonics seven to eight makes an up major second. And harmonics eight to nine make a plain major second. So, so from seven to nine, it adds up to make an up major third. Four harmonic thirds. Put them all together to get a beautiful ninth chord. So in 12 Edo, a third is only major or minor. And so in this case, on the kite guitar, you got twice the options, four choices. So this is the down minor third. In this case, instead of doing it all in an order with one chord, I'm showing it with the same static root. So down minor third, up minor third, down major third, and up major third. Isomorphic tunings. So unfortunately, a kite guitar can't practically be tuned to the same E, A, D, G, B, E tuning that was standard for regular guitar. Uh, it's not just because of eight strings. I could do this on a six string, of course. But the issue is the intervals are too far away, the, the good intervals. And then the off ones get really close in the E, A, G, G, B, E. And so instead, the standard most common tuning we use for the kite guitar is all thirds, down major thirds specifically. And fortunately, that makes it isomorphic, which means same shape. So you can move any chord shape around in any direction. All right. And that really greatly speeds up learning your way around. With 12 Edo, the, the open strings all fit into the common keys of C, G, D, A minor, and E minor. So using the open strings works pretty well. But when you tune in thirds, it's not so practical because the open strings don't all fit into any one key. And it also reduces the range of the instrument, which is why this beast of an eight string guitar is one of the ways to go. Uh, but six still works. So besides this, this uh, standard tuning of, of uh, down major thirds, there are many alternate tunings. You could tune in up minor thirds. There are also some cool open tunings like dadgad. We'll cover those next time. Open tunings aren't as flexible for chord progressions, but they're great for melodies and riffs. The down major chord. So any two complementary thirds add up to a fifth. That's standard music theory, major and minor complement each other. And in this case, it works out, so do up and down. So a down major third, you know, so because it's tuned to down major third, that's a down major third, plus an up minor third from there gets us a perfect fifth. And together, that's a down major triad. You know, in standard music theory, a D major chord is often can be called a D chord for short. Similarly, a D down major chord, we often call a D down chord for short, or even just D if we know the context. On the kite guitar, a fourth is always 
one string over and two frets up. And so since a fourth and a fifth make an octave, the octave is three strings over and one fret up. So once you know the octave shape, it's easy to find inversions for chord shapes. Here's my original root position. Move the root up an octave and I get first inversion. Move that next note, the third up an octave and I get second inversion. And those are close voicing, so I could spread them out and get an open voicing. Other triads. Up minor is the next one I'll show you. And then in open voicing. And up, uh, down minor. open voicing of that. Kind of has an interesting bluesy sound. And here's the up major, or just up chord. It has an aggressive, edgy sound. I could imagine it working in punk rock or heavy metal. As we'll see later, adding a seventh and or a ninth makes it a little less harsh. So those were all root positions. You can find inversions moving octaves around. It, the logic is pretty consistent, so despite so many notes, it's actually really easy and comfortable to find your way around on this. There are also sus4 and sus2 chords. Those are the only two triads on the standard guitar that are really in tune with the harmonics. No wonder they're so popular. And they're great on the kite guitar too. So there's the second and the fourth, the sus4. And since I can resolve to such a nice blended regular major chord, the down major, that really fits well. So all six triads we just covered, close positions. Here's a two, and then the down minor, up minor, down major, up major, and the four. That's the notes that I've got right in an order, so that's my set, and nothing else is in the way. Chord progressions. Let's look at a common chord progression. Uh, C, G, A minor, F. In Roman numeral notation, that's one, five, six minor, four. Let's translate these same chords to the kite guitar. So using traditional harmonies, major becomes down major, minor becomes up minor, and the song sounds familiar, just sweeter. So C becomes C down, A minor becomes down A up minor, etc. Why down A? Because the F chord, graphic? Oh, sorry, yeah. And the C chord contain this chord. Yeah, there you go. I happen to have forgotten to play in the key of C, but since everything is isomorphic, it's easy to move to whatever key. And uh, I think more in terms of numbers than in letters in general. And Speaking often, numbers. yeah, and so often, just when I'm talking about this, we know the context. I don't give the full down, up, and up minor and everything. Technically, it's down, uh, one down, five down, down six up minor, and then four down. But I'll usually just say one, five, six, four, like normal. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we don't write the, a minor chord with a lowercase Roman numeral because a lowercase v looks too much like a down symbol. So maybe you'll follow some of this, but I want you to notice I'm going to play a piece for you. The physical logic on the instrument here works really smoothly, 
Like I can play a chord and it shares certain notes and there's just a couple shapes and they move around very logically. And maybe you can follow this chart, but I'm gonna play a simple arrangement of green sleeves here. piece that uses all four kinds of triads and I believe we have a video clip Seventh chords. With seventh chords, the kite guitar really shines. Here are the four harmonic sevenths, analogous to the, se the same four harmonic thirds we had from before. The down major seven, the down minor seven, I'll start with, sorry. And then the up minor seven. down major seven and up major seven. And that's really tense because it's so close to an octave, but it works really well melodically. So how do these sevenths fit into chords? Aaron, uh, can you play that seventh chord from the harmonic series? So that's called a down seven chord. You know, a conventional dominant seventh chord has a major third, a perfect fifth, and a minor seventh. Adding the word up or down to the conventional chord name raises or lowers the third, sixth, and seventh, but not the root or fifth. So the down seven chord has a down major third, a perfect fifth, and a down minor seventh. Yeah, so here's this close voicing I just did. Root third, fifth, seventh. Specifically, root down third, fifth, down seven. And I can move my fourth finger over an octave to get a nice open voicing. Root fifth, seventh, tenth, 
So we call this the high three voicing. And that's nice in the sense that it kind of hides that interesting seventh, and so it's more subtle. It still blends, but it's in the middle voice more. You could also move your uh, second finger down an octave, or down, yeah, to get a low five voicing. There's a lot of others we could do too. Uh, so the next part of that, one other little detail, that if I leave out the root, this is a diminished triad that actually blends quite nicely. We'll so talk more about other, that another time. Sorry. <laughs> so what, are, what other seventh chords are there? Well, in general, the third matches the seventh. Up goes with up and down goes with down. Yeah, so the conventional minor seven chord could usually would usually be translated to an up seven. That's the more traditional sound. So there's the close that's the closed voicing. Here's more open voicing. Nice sound also. We could also make it the down minor. And here's a more open voicing of that. Now that one actually sounds nice with a flat five also. That's an interesting, nice sound. And the conventional dominant seventh chord, that one that I've been doing can be the down seven, but also we can make it the more edgy up seven, which <laughs> does sound better with the ninth added. So that's one of my favorite chords but I'm more likely to resolve from an up seven than to it. So here's up minor seven to up nine and back. So the major seven, that up major is pretty harsh. Uh, let me get that moment, okay, there we go. <laughs> but a down major seven is really nice and wistful. So here's, here's a nice example of that. So all these seventh chords can be voiced high three, low five, etc. Here's a recap. And there's other new chords waiting to be discovered, so don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, I'll play quickly a cool progression that uses some of these seventh chords. So we've only had time to see a little bit of what the kite guitar can do today. We've focused on harmonies a lot. Of course, there's melodic things we could explore if we had more time. Non-Western stuff, maybe. Well, uh, later we'll also discuss some of the challenges that come up in translating familiar songs to 41 Edo. So go ahead, check out our website, kiteguitar.com, where you can access all the growing resources, register for updates, and other cool stuff. All right.